Andy Mitten joins the show. Andy, good evening. Good evening, good evening. Andy. Andy, really evening. appreciate you coming on. Obviously, a sad day for everyone involved at Manchester United. Um, and, you know, just obviously doing a show for the, you know, the first hour, the amount of people that have phoned up who, um, you know, are really emotional about speaking about Bobby Charlton. And, and you know, it is, um, he's touched so many people, especially at Manchester United. Yeah, he, he was a, a huge figure in Manchester United's history. He's the man who the main stand at Old Trafford is named after. His statue is on the forecourt alongside um, Dennis Law and George Best. I mean, to think three European players of the year in the same team at the same time. How do you get in that side? So I, I spoke to Brian Kidd earlier on and he said, I had to try and get in that team as a forward. Mm-hmm. And he was younger mm-hmm. than all. Mm-hmm. And he said, I'd look at um, Bobby every day, and he, he wasn't a man of many words, but you just follow his actions. And you knew you couldn't emulate him because you could never get to that level. But if you could get onto the pitch and follow his professionalism, he said he's very demanding of the younger players as well. And often it was just a, hey, come on. And that was enough. And then they just tried to copy him and do what, what he did. And he was one of the best players in the world with the statistics and the medals to to show for it. Mm-hmm. It is a parent record for Manchester United. I never thought that would be broken. No, seven, five, eight games when I was growing up. And, and Ryan Giggs did break it. Yeah. His goal scoring record at Manchester United. I never thought that would be broken. And Wayne Rooney broke it. 40 years later, he held the record for, for England. For, for appearances, for, for goals. But it wasn't just that. He saw some of his closest friends die in the Munich air disaster. He was seriously injured himself in 1958. Now imagine that. You come through at a football club. You're a young lad. Mm-hmm. You're an apprentice. In an incredibly gifted generation of players, they become known as the Busby Babes. And then you see several of them die as a making a charge to become mm. the first English team to win the European Cup. And to come back from that, and I recommend these two autobiographies because they're stunning books, to help lead Manchester United, first of all, into recovery and then to rise to become FA Cup winners in 63, league champions 65, 67, and the first English team to win the European Cup in 1968 was phenomenal. Yeah. And he was there all along. He carried on playing until 1973. He was known around the world long before the, the Premier League became the, this 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 global brand. You, know, you genuinely would meet waiters in Spain who couldn't speak any English but could say Bobby Charlton. Mm, yeah, we, we, we've got a, a text in here saying exactly the same thing you just said, Andy, that foreign people in the country in the 60s you know, they tried, they wanted to get involved with um, the English people. It was Bobby Charlton, Bobby Charlton. You know, that was the main, the main two words that they knew. Because he was the, um, he, he was a huge star for England. They were, were world champions. England was the home of football, and maybe because he was a forward as well, and because he scored those spectacular goals. And Brian Kidd said to me <laughs> earlier on, "I defy anyone to say whether he was left or right footed." because he was equally brilliant with both. He had yep. this body swerve. He was a danger all over the pitch. He could kick the pick the ball up and attack from anywhere in the pitch. We can see his goals. We can see some of his goals coming up here, Andy. Oh, and I'm saying to Jamie, I'm saying, like, everything's a smash. Left foot smash. Right foot smash. Yeah. Bottom corners, top corners. No back lift. Yeah. And and did it at the highest level. And, and Kiddo said... The one part of his game he wasn't renowned for was was his heading ability, and then he goes and scores a header in the European Cup final. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it's a very sad day today, and I, I grew up with with my my parents and, and my uncle telling me about uh, Bobby Charlton. But as in it, as a as a kid in Manchester in the eighties, it was all about the Bobby Charlton soccer school because it was quite high profile, mm-hmm. and you thought if you can get into that, then you're basically fifteen steps away from being a you know, a Manchester United player. And mm. it, of course that was ridiculous because your parents had to pay for you to go there. But you go to this field in Fallowfield in Manchester and you'd see him there walking around, not just watching the footballers, but watching kids participating in sport. Yeah. And he looked really well, even though he was no longer you know, a, a football professional football player. And he'd just give little words of advice to people. And it, 
didn't work to a professional level, although it did, it did for David Beckham. You know, he often cites going to the Sir Bobby Charlton Soccer School as one of the major landmarks of his life. Mm. But the tributes coming in from far and wide, they're totally justified. He's um, a major figure, not just in English football, but, but in world football. And sad that it is today, he did live to a great age and he lived an incredible life. Yeah, I yeah. Think so many people would, would, would cherish the memories of him. Yeah. Um, Andy, question for you. We've, we've had Manchester United fans come on today talking about the number nine shirt um, and how they think it maybe should be retired. Would you get behind that? I've not, I've not given that any thought, to be honest. Um, I think the fact that the main stand is named after him is hugely significant. And I know that meant a lot to him. Mm-hmm. And I know that when that happened, you know, his health has not been the best in recent years. And we saw an incredibly emotional man when he saw his name on top of the main stand at Old Trafford. That main stand should be improved. It should be expanded and it should keep the name of, of Sir Bobby Charles yeah. because, as we've said, he was so significant. And Smart Busby's manager gave a lovely quote about, about Sir Bobby. He said, the greatest thing for a manager is to trust the talent. Bobby Charlton never betrayed that trust. It was a privilege to have him play for you. And how many players can a manager say that about him? He was clearly a top world-class player. And England fans loved him as well. 66, 1970. Um, he even got a line in the New Order song, didn't he, in the 1990 World Cup. So he spanned the different generations. Mm, yeah, absolutely. 